Before we get into this tutorial, I just want to let you guys know I am having a flash sale on my Etsy shop currently. The code is a May flash sale and you can get 25% off any order that is at least $23. So take advantage of that. Hey guys, I know what you're thinking. You're like, Lauren, is that you? But relax, it's just me, it's just Tanae, not Lauren Hill, just your favorite artist in the whole world. Okay, that's enough narcissism for one video. Today I am doing a 2023 update on how I make my art prints and I'll probably show how I make my stickers too. The first time I ever did this video was when I unboxed my printer that I'm still using, which is the Epson Artisan 1430. It is no longer being produced. It hasn't been for years now. I got it in 2017 um, and I think it was discontinued in like 2019. But there is an, like an upgrade or like, you know, a newer model of it. And I'll link that in the comments in the description box. Um, in case anybody wants to go out and buy that because today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own prints at home. So like I said, I've been making my own prints since 2017. It was a lot of learning and figuring things out over the years. And I can finally say that now I have perfected my entire process. I thought I was doing good back then, but actually my prints are five times better now than they were then. And I'm going to show you how i am still using the same um paper production company which is redriverpaper.com um i get eight by tens eight by tens 11 by 14s and 13 by 19 inch paper from them because my printer only allows me to print up to 13 by 19 but obviously if you have one that's um better then you can print bigger sizes now when i first started and for many many years actually every year up until 2023 i was using photoshop to edit the colors of my not the colors but like edit the color settings of my artwork in order to print it and i was printing an rgb I had seen a lot of different things around what was best for printing. Um, and I was also a little confused because I didn't understand that RGB is best for looking at things on a screen and CMYK is best for things that you're actually gonna print out. So I didn't understand that when I was like showing something to someone on like a social media platform, RGB was good, but CMYK was better if I was actually gonna print it out. I just thought that <laughs> like I could use one for everything and I was using RGB. Um, there's a lot of like different things on the internet and different opinions, but I actually decided to test this whole CMYK thing this year and I was really happy with the results. First of all, how I was printing before, not only was I printing RGB, but I was adding on all these additional settings in the printer settings that I did not have to do. <laughs> not at all. So I'm gonna show y'all exactly what I do now. We're going to make a print of my Megan Thee Stallion piece. And I'm gonna show you what an old print looked like and what the new one looks like. I'm gonna open my Megan Thee Stallion. So this is this is my my file for my eight by ten making the stallion drawing. Just gonna get a little bigger. So what I used to do is I would you know open a piece, you know edit the brightness, saturation, all that stuff, just because you know I was photographing this art, so the colors are a little off. You have to like kind of go in and and match them to real life colors. Um, so I did all that. Uh, that part of my process is still the same. You know, brightness, contrast, saturation, color balance, all that is the same. Let me open something that I haven't edited yet. Okay, I'm gonna open something that I'm actually not selling as a print. So this is my Lauren Hill drawing, <laughs> coincidentally. <laughs> What I like to do is I'll open 
this same drawing up i'll open it up on my phone so i can see how it looks when people see it on a screen at least well how i see it on the screen because that's how i want it to look when i print it out because when i took that picture that's what looked good to me that picture like showed it with like accurate vibrant colors and all of that so that's what i want to match it to but first i want to convert it to cmyk when you convert something from rgb to cmyk you're gonna notice that the photo immediately like loses saturation that's just how cmyk is and because of that we have to make up for that um and make edit the photo so that it looks brighter than it does on your reference and more saturated than it does on your reference because once you print it out it's going to balance out and look like your reference but yeah you got to make up for that desaturation and stuff so converting it to cmyk did it change a little bit I've had some like change a whole lot, like just get really ugly and pale <laughs> and washed out looking. So that's not bad. So I'm gonna make this brighter. Just a little bit brighter than I actually wanted to look when it's printed out. And I'm also gonna make this warmer some photos you have to do more than you do for others there are some that i have to use color balance um let's do like that that's good and then i'm just gonna add a little bit of saturation when you're working with cmyk you can't do vibrance you have to do saturation So now I am actually going to do a little color balance. But this is only going to affect the grays in my photo because I'm going to go back and erase what it did to the face. That's another thing, like different things that you do will affect some colors the right way and other colors like not the right way so i don't like how blue it made lauren's face but i like what it did to the gray so i'm just gonna erase with a soft rounded brush erase the part that was on her face it's like a little cheat <laughs> Um, also another thing to note that I have realized myself is when it comes to digital pieces, um, dark browns do not translate well with CMYK. And what I mean by that is, for example, the print I showed you earlier of the three women with their booties out. <laughs> when I edited that in CMYK and I'm adding brightness and I'm adding saturation and all that stuff, the dark brown shades are not moving at all. They're not doing anything. Um, and if they do do anything, they look even more washed out instead of brighter and more saturated. So in cases like that, I actually do print in RGB and it comes out the way it's supposed to because I printed that in RGB. But yeah, that's just something to note. That's something I noticed just specifically about digital pieces with dark shades of brown. But everything else I've been able to do just fine. Um, Another thing that you can possibly do is levels. You know, I mean, just get it to how you want it. Like whatever. Oh yeah, let me, I like that. I like that. I like that. Okay. <laughs> so yeah this is looking good actually i think i'll make it a little bit brighter 
to get it print ready because like I said, it's going to print out like way less bright than it is on my screen. And once that's done, now I'm just going to get it print ready. So I'm going to make an 8 by 10 print. sure it's even on all sides add a border I, I ain't even gonna lie to y'all I be eyeballing my borders like <laughs> I, I get it like within this like I look at this width this thickness right here this is exactly where I want it because if you make it too small then your print is gonna come out like if you make it too thin your print is gonna come out with uh, uneven borders that's another thing I had to learn and then you obviously don't want to make it too big and just have the piece taking up like a little tiny bit of space and the borders taking up too much space so I'm gonna save it as a JPEG because also when you work with CMYK, you cannot save as a PNG. And I don't think there's a reason for that. I don't know what it is, but there has to be one. <laughs> I'm going to save this. It's on my other screen. That's why you guys can't see it. Lauren Hill 8x10. And we're going to print this. Now, printer settings. Like I said before, I used to print things with additional settings in the printer settings that I did not have to do. Um, I'm going to show y'all what I used to do and what I do now. So where is Lauren? There she is. So yeah, I go into my files. Now I used to print directly from Photoshop, but... I've had issues with it. So I go into my files, right click and press print. And then I click options, printer properties. I gotta plug my printer up. Okay, so previously what I would do is I would come to advanced tab over here. Okay. And I would click, well, it will automatically have this unchecked right um and i would actually input all of this stuff for the input profile i would have it as this because i was printing in rgb and i would set it to absolute color metric and then i would set this to the printer profile that red river provides for the specific type of paper that you're printing on and that was in addition to all of, you know having the rgb settings in photoshop and things would come out different kind of ways all the time and they it was like the prints were cute but they weren't like the colors weren't exact um and like the depth of the prints and like the saturation and the deep like everything was just off but it was like cute enough so it was like whatever now i've gotten it so that all of that stuff is accurate so what i do now I still come over to my advanced tab um, and I turn this off and I actually have my custom settings saved and that's all I do. I just have colors off completely because the the CMYK setting that's embedded in the photo is going to print it how I want it to be printed. So I don't need to do nothing else. I just make sure that this is right. You know, I'm using thick um, matte paper, premium paper, and I make sure this is max DPI. I make sure it's the right dimensions and that you know it's the right orientation and that's it and then i i have to make sure i come back up here because it changes the custom setting after you put all those settings in you have to click on best photo or else it's gonna shoot out of your printer and it's gonna look like <laughs> the lowest quality okay that's all i do now i was doing so much extra this is all i ever had to do <laughs> 
so we're gonna print this. Okay, so Lauren just finished printing. I'm gonna have to show you guys on my other camera so you can see it. And I'm also actually gonna print this Megan the Stallion print out just so you guys can see the difference between how they used to look when I was doing RGB and how they look now. So this is the 2023 Meg print. <laughs> Looking how it's supposed to look. And I'm gonna show it to you up close too. That blue is just all off. Like it's a cute blue, but it's all off. So here you can see the differences in the 2023 version up close with the older version. Not just that the blues are completely different shades, but the old version is just darker and less vibrant. And also I edited the background so that you can't see all of the little pastel strokes because it made it look kind of messy. So this newer version is a lot more clean than the old one and just more accurate overall. So I do not use Epson ink due to the fact that it's expensive as fuck and I am constantly having, not constantly, but I have to buy ink. Like if I'm selling prints on a regular basis, I'll have to buy ink like three or four times a year, um, but I'm not selling prints on a regular basis. <laughs> but I used to just print like crazy. I don't do that anymore. I just print on demand. Um, so I, you know, I buy knockoff ink and I have these refillable cartridges and I got these from, I don't know the name of the shop, but I'll link it below. I know they were like on a break, um, a few weeks ago because they were having like a lot of shipping delays or whatever, but, um, they will be back open eventually. So if anybody wants to get these and remember, these are for the epson artisan 1430 i think they fall under um some other printers too or maybe that's the ink i'm not sure but you'll have to find out what kind of cartridge you need for your specific printer and the same ink, same goes with the ink too and i'll link the, the ink below i know i got that off amazon so i can link that below and if you buy some i get a little percentage <laughs> nobody uses my affiliate links like but yeah, it's knockoff. It's a super cheap version of the the same thing, you know, same results, if not better results. Um, and you're not spending $140 on it every time you have to re-up. And you get all of the ink that you pay for. <laughs> I would have to look way, way, way back. Well, not way, way back, but back to 2017 or 2018, I think, to find out where I got my supplies that I used to actually refill the cartridges, like the syringes and stuff, because I got those way before I got these. Um, but I'll look for that and hopefully link that below too. Now, all of these settings go for stickers as well. I don't use a cry cut machine um, or anything like that, but... Um, I think like color settings would still be, you know, the same no matter how you're cutting your stickers out. So yeah, my, I really don't even have to show you guys the sticker part cause I do it the exact same way. I just open my sheet with the stickers on it and um, actually usually edit the art piece before I even put it, copy it on to a sticker sheet multiple times. Um, and yeah, I just print it out with the same exact settings my printer that's my baby apparently these things only have a lifespan of three years and i've had mine for six so i actually thought that it it did die a few months ago but it was just tweaking it didn't want to work when it was plugged into my um like power strip <laughs> it only wanted to work plugged into the wall which is fine with me do you have any questions about printing, whether it's about art prints or stickers? I can't really speak on nothing else. I know a lot of people were asking me about sublimation and t-shirts and stuff on my last printing video. I can't give no advice on that because I don't do that yet. 
Um, but if you have questions about printing art, um, you know, prints or stickers, I can answer those questions. Like I said, I got y'all on the ink, on the refillable cartridges and the syringes and the paper. And yeah, just follow those settings. It's super simple. And really, um, you know, experiment when you're like doing the brightness and saturation and stuff. Cause it may not come out perfectly the very first time, but just look at it and be like, oh, okay, it needs a little bit more um, saturation or it needs a little bit more warmth, you know, whatever. Um, I would recommend printing on like uh, four by sixes. So you don't waste too much ink trying to figure out, um, you know, your colors and stuff. But yeah, this has been really successful for me. My prints look so much better. I hope this was helpful. Um, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And make sure you check out my sale on Etsy right now. Because prints are 25% off with the code that I gave you earlier. I'll give it to you again. And um, support artists who are still alive. Okay. Love you guys. Bye.